Is it possible to break up a sphere into individual pieces and reassemble those spheres into two spheres that are identical in every way to the original? Seems impossible, right? But if you accept something the mathematicians call the axiom of choice, then this paradoxical result follows. In this video, we'll explain this axiom and its bizarre consequences. You may be asking, what is an axiom? In mathematics, an axiom is a proposition regarded as self-evidently true without proof. An example would be the existence axiom that merely claims there exists a set. All kinds of sets can be imagined. The set of even numbers, or even the set of your friends. Hence, we have a good reason to accept the existence axiom. In the early 20th century, mathematicians Ernst Zermelo and Abraham Frankel proposed an axiomatic system in order to formulate a theory of sets free of paradoxes. There are nine basic axioms that make up zermelo frankel set theory. The axiom of choice is an addition to the nine basic axioms. This axiom is historically controversial and we'll soon see why. What is the axiom of choice? The axiom of choice states that given an infinite collection of non-empty sets, a new set can be formed that contains elements from each set. This axiom allows for infinitely many choices at once. A classic example of explaining the axiom of choice involves shoes and socks. But we'll be using something a little different instead. Let's first consider finitely many piles of M&Ms. It would be no problem to make a rule that the green M&M is selected because there's only one of those in each pile. But what about the case where there are piles of single colors? Given, given these piles, an ordering can be assigned in each one of these so that a specific M&M is selected. But they all look the same. Therefore, the only way we can really specify a choice or ordering is to choose arbitrarily. What does this mean? It means that choosing randomly implies the existence of a choice function. Unlike the first example where a rule was used, in this example we need the choice axiom. It should also be noted that if there are infinitely, if there are infinitely many single color piles, then the axiom of choice is needed because it would take a human forever to go through each pile and just pick one out randomly. This assumption that there is a way to choose arbitrarily from any number of things may sound like a simple, sensible assumption to make, but it actually is a lot more interesting than first meets the eye. Accepting the axiom of choice is more like opening the door to a whole new world of mathematical consequences and implications. One of the most interesting and important of these results is actually logically equivalent to the axiom, the well-ordering theorem. In order to understand the theorem, we first have to understand what having a well-ordered set even means. Normally, sets don't really have any particular order to them. They're just kind of a jumble of objects, whether they be numbers or even M&Ms. For a set to have a well ordering, it must have some sort of way of comparing the objects that yields a smallest element. For example, the set of all natural numbers, n, is well ordered because 1 is obviously the least element. But what about the integers? For them, we can't use their natural ordering because that would never yield the least element. We would just keep going down and down towards negative infinity. Thus we have to define a different comparison in order to see the well-ordering of this set. What about if we ranked integers by their absolute value, or distance from zero, with negative numbers coming earlier in the list than their positive counterparts? We would get the order z equals zero, negative one, one, negative two, two, so on. This is well-ordered because we know that the least element by this comparison system is zero. This can similarly, although in a slightly more complicated way, be extended to the rational numbers, q, but we will leave that to you as an exercise. What does the theorem say? The well-ordering theorem states that every set is well-ordered, even uncountably infinite sets, like the interval from 0 to 1, where we don't even know necessarily where to start. This is a big deal. It means that any collection of things in our minds that we can come up with, as long as they're proven to exist by the earlier, more basic axioms of set theory, can be ordered in some way that has a recognizable starting point or least element. Even those indiscrete single colored M&M piles have some sort of ordering. How is this logically equivalent to the axiom of choice though? 
they have nothing to do with one another, right? Actually, they kind of have a lot to do with one another. Let's see why. Why the well-ordering theorem implies the axiom of choice. We define f as an arbitrary collection of sets. Assuming the well-ordering theorem holds, the set uf of all the elements of the sets in f is ordered by some ordering or comparison mechanism, which we'll call less than. Note, each set in f is a subset of uf, and therefore, all those sets follow the same ordering scheme. Thus, we can define a choice function that iterates over all the, the sets in f as a mapping between all the sets in f and the elements in uf by letting the choice function be the least element of x of the set x under less than. And this works because every set in f has that ordering as noted above. This proof shows that assuming the well-ordering theorem, the axiom of choice holds as well because there's always some way to choose from any number, from any number of well-ordered sets by choosing the least one. Next, let's see why the axiom of choice implies the well-ordering theorem. A full proof is beyond the scope of this video, but the intuition behind it is simple. If you have a bucket full of blueberries and have the patience to pick one blueberry out at random out of the bucket as long as there are blueberries left, you may pick out all the blueberries and lay them in a totally ordered row. Now imagine this is an infinite bucket with a lot more blueberries. Then we can consider every remaining amount of blueberries when we take one out to be an entirely new set. The axiom of choice is that patience and system that allows us to choose arbitrarily from this infinite number of sets of blueberries. It follows that the axiom of choice and the well-ordering theorem are logically equivalent. However, there is another more absurd consequence of the axiom that lurks in the shadows touched on in the beginning, the Bonnach-Tarski paradox. As our last example, consider an orange split into a finite number of pieces, then put together those pieces to create two oranges that are identical to the original orange. How is this possible? It is possible because an orange has a finite number of atoms in a crystalline structure. If this structure was examined using a microscope, you would see the atoms laid out in a fixed pattern. Let's split these atoms up into four groups, R1, R2, R3, and R4. We then spread out the atoms so no group is still a solid. If we rotate R1 and connect it with R2 in the same spherical region, the atoms in both groups line up forming the same crystalline structure as the original orange. Assuming this can be done with R3 and R4, what we're left with is two oranges that are the same size as the original but with half the density. It is impossible to create two objects with the same density as the original because objects in the physical world have a finite number of atoms or points. This is why Bonnach-Tarski is a paradox. However, this paradox can exist mathematically. The difference between math and the real world is that math doesn't have to follow a conservation of mass. A sphere, unlike an orange, doesn't have a mass. It's an uncountable set of points with particular topological and geometrical relationships. The axiom of choice is what allows us to choose an uncountably infinite number of points from the infinite points on the sphere's surface in order to create the the pieces used to make the two spheres from one. We hope you enjoyed learning about the axiom of choice. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified of any new videos.